Well, hello, everyone. So this panel is, uh, as Angie said, part one of two. This is from the lens of the startup uh, or the founder raising the funds. The next one is going to be from the lens of the investor. And in that sense, some of the questions will repeat, but hopefully it'll give you a little bit of an insight into the different dynamics that a startup entrepreneur feels as opposed to um, the VC. With us today, um, we have one VC hidden in the crowd, but the reason that we curated almost on here was because I've known him for many years and he's in essence a builder and I also think he's got some very good insights from that startup experience. But why don't we start with a little introduction of who we are and what we do. It's the second time that I introduce myself today. <laughs> but uh, very quickly, I'm... Um, but it's not all the same yeah. people on the panel. All right, yeah, I'm a crypto entrepreneur in the past uh, 11 years. Uh, was building one of the first protocol on Bitcoins for digital assets called Colored Coins 2012. Um, then built different protocols, companies sit on different boards, and um, now I run a fund called Node Capital, which invests in crypto projects. Uh, my name is Vince Howard. Uh, I'm from Opus Group. Uh, so I've been involved in blockchain uh, and fundraising for a while for crypto products and, and projects. Uh, but prior to that, I worked in asset management and consulting as well. Uh, but I, uh, what I'd like to say is help companies get to a point where they're attractive to investors, but also attractive, uh, attractive to audiences as well, uh, customers, consumers. Yeah, my name is uh, Mark Diaz Williams, and. Um I'm with Banger, and Banger is a Web3 platform meant for Web2 gamers. Hi everybody, my name is Benjamin. I'm the co-founder of Dare Was Entertainment, a gaming metaverse studio recently acquired by Animoca Brands. We, uh, we're a 100 people team now all across Europe. We have, uh, I've been, uh, I'm pretty late to the Web3 party, so we, we joined uh, the Web3 world in 2021. Uh, previously, I've been making games for more than 10 years. I used to be a creative director at Ubisoft on a game that you might know called Assassin's Creed. And uh, very happy to be with you. I'll tell you about our journey. Hey, guys. Um, uh, Dane Hammer, or as uh, my team like to call me, uh, the Lord of Growth um, for uh, Block Lords. So uh, yeah, we, 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 we're building Block Lords. It's a medieval metaverse where it combines uh, the best aspects of Age of Empires, you know, uh, farming, building resources, building community, um, Total War, ultimately just epic fucking battle scenes, uh, and then Crusader Kings, political warfare, uh, navigation through um, politics, ultimately in family politics all designed through a Game of Thrones narrative, uh, built on blockchain, which then allows the player to uh, ultimately own and define his own, own journey. Um, and then eventually feature in the movie. Cool. So I guess the question that is uh, the most obvious is, are we in a crypto winter from the perspective of uh, your fundraising, your building, your selling, Wants should, to take should that. I take it? Okay. <laughs> so um, uh, this is not not a crypto winter, uh, in my view. Like in crypto winter, um, you feel like you know uh, there is no one to sell to, there is no one to talk to. Um, people think your family think that you're building a scam, um, um, and. And basically, like, you think like you lived in the dream uh, in the bull market and now you woke up um, to something that was not real. So this is the feeling in a bear market. Um, we're really not in a crypto bear market. We're in a macro, maybe, bear market, right? So uh, the macro environment is, is really tough and a lot of bad things happening in the market, um, you know, war. Um, inflation, all of those things, and, and crypto actually is in its best shape it was in a very, very long time. Um, so to me, when we're not in a crypto bear market, we're in a macro bear market, which affects crypto as well. Yeah, a good distinction. And anyone to take on? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think um, 
Honest, first, it's great to hear that coming from an investor. Um, I, I would say that I, I don't know if it's a crypto winter or not, but it definitely feels like it's freezing right now. Um, in the sense that, you know, when you, it, I think it's very, you feel like it's a very unfair moment where if you're really well funded, it's amazing because then you have the opportunity, because I totally agree with you, probably the best, uh, you know, the, the best stage right now where you can build and focus on building and it kind of cl cleans a little bit the, the, the market. But as we're talking about funding today, I think it's, it's a difficult time to raise capital uh, when, you're a, when you're a startup founder uh, and, and really forces you to work on extending your runway much more than ever uh, from, from what I've seen. Anyone else feel, uh, feel that crunch? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think, you know, having spent uh, a majority of our time with existing uh, investors and then, you know, potential uh, investors, I, the, the overriding theme um, I can kind of summarize through a, a line I got out of, out of a Disney comic book and that being, you know, out of adversity uh, comes heroes. And uh, from... Uh, prosperity creates monsters, right? So kind of right where we are right now with the bear market, it's applying pressure that essentially is separating the wheat from the chaff, right? So the euros from the villains. Um, so uh, I, think, I think we're, we're, we're thriving in a, in a, in a bear market. Um, and it feels very, very, uh, very much like a vivid uh, deja vu. Uh, it's kind of like we've seen this movie before, but it's just with different characters, right? There's a, a variety of different um, historical moments that uh, are very key to learn from um, the 2008 crash, you know, as an example. Um, I was very fortunate to be um, in the water, so to say, or on the, on the, on the wave from Web 1 to, to uh, web, web 2, uh, or the IT boom, the dot-com boom, whatever you'd like to call it. Um, and like with all the friends and people that are like were with me at the time, I'm kind of like nudging them going, are you watching this? It's fucking happening again. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's the same cycle repeating itself. Um, and uh, it's kind of now is the time where you find opportunity, right? From an investor's perspective, now are the projects that you can actually kind of find quality. Because now is the time where you find the, the talent and the pros, um, the euros are, are, are getting to work, they're building. Um, and the crap, as the French may say, has been flushed out. You know? So, and I think that makes it uh, much more, I mean, it's always, the job of a, of a founder of a startup to tell their story in a way that it's convincing to an investor. Um, Vince, tell us a little bit about storytelling. What, what do you do in order to tell the right story, especially from the perspective of your company? Yes, yeah, it's, it's a really good question. I mean, uh, people fall in love with narratives, right? We, we don't uh, tend to just look at numbers. We are emotional beings. We tend to be suckered in or convinced by things that are interesting to us or insightful in some way. Uh, and I think the, the success stories in branding, marketing, when you look at companies like Apple, uh, it's because of the story they were able to tell through their design language, uh, the way they communicated their products and the way they advertised. Uh, and I think um, much like the heroes and villains uh, analogy, in the early days when the tree is very, very short, the fruit is low to the ground, as it grows and the market matures, it becomes much more difficult to get the fruit. It's no longer low hanging, right? So companies within uh, our space that we're talking about now have to work a lot harder to one, have a clear narrative and tell a story that's convincing, uh, but also just to find that minimum viable community, right? You know, you've got to get, in Web3, you've got to get a, a really passionate group of people who understand your objective, your mission, and it's almost like, you know, old school marketing focus groups yeah. where you find, you know, let's test this out. What do people like about this glass? What do they not like about this glass? How do we refine that? But, you know, clearly now the power is moving back into the community and they really are the architects of the success or failure of a product. So I think rather than 
you know, 10, 15 years ago, where the challenge would have been, how do we convince a VC to think we're a great company and we're investable? I think it's a case of almost ignoring them to some extent, I'm sorry, uh, and convincing the audience and the community that, hey, this is something you should be involved in and this was successful. And if you're able to do that, naturally you're going to hopefully attract investment who can see the potential of the company. So that kind of leads to the second question. I, reading all of your bios ahead of this, um, it dawned on me that you've all had experience in Web 2 and have all had experience in Web 3. You're even doing it at the same time. Um, Mark, tell us a little bit about the difference in terms of dealing with investors, dealing with uh, fundraising, with... Uh... Yeah, so if, having had experience in, in fundraising, let's call it Web2 fundraising, you know, the traditional uh, VC concept that, that this was just talking about, it, it's a completely different story. It's, it's, it's a different animal altogether. One of the things that I think we, we got lucky in early is that we realized that we didn't just have to look at Web3 investors, that if we were able to tell a story to a Web2 VC that was simple enough that they didn't need to understand the, the complexities that this structure, this ecosystem has, that, that, was, that there was something there that would allow us to be able to get traditional Web2 funding. Although, I mean, we've raised up until now uh, approximately $11, 11 million uh, dollars. And I would say it's less than a third from the, from the Web 2. Um, but it's, it's being able to kind of, I wouldn't say dumb down the story, but it is being able to put it in layman's terms where that VC doesn't need to be an expert in, in Web 3 to understand what the progression of the, of the platform is going to be. Yeah, I, I think that um, I relate to a lot of the things that you're saying. And I think that in the past two years, uh, like it ruined I think a lot of entrepreneurs, like what's happening in the market, it was so easy to raise money. Uh, you needed to prepare like a very quick deck, you will send it, uh, the VC will not do any DD and will just you know, send you the money if you're doing something in crypto. And I think that really ruined a lot of things. Um, I'll give you, for example, my experience, okay? When I started to raise money for my first, it was a Bitcoin company because there was no even a term, uh, called crypto, I I pitched in a little bit more than two weeks. Um, Seventy eight VCs. It was really line up um, well because one of the uh, founders was EIR at one of the ventures in in New York, and and seventy seven of them said no, and you get I, I got like five to six no's a day. Um, um, and, and the last one said yes, but... Um, and was it really the last? That was, yeah, it was 77 no's? It, it was the last, it was pure luck. We had no idea what we were doing. We were changing the pitch every, uh, every time. Really, really disaster. It was, it was a total disaster. And, and I think that uh, today, um, you know, entrepreneurs are, are not prepared to that because there were uh, they were so spoiled in the past two years where it was so easy to raise money and now they're kind of like getting the reward you know, in front of them and, and it's hard to deal with and they need to work harder and, you know, and, and be better. Yeah, on that I can totally uh, picture what you went through and, and, and maybe to, uh, to nuance a little bit my point before. The, what is definitely better today is that the... Raising in Web3 is very different than raising in Web2 in the sense that investors are looking at different type of metrics, different type of... Everybody's still looking for product market fit, but it's been measured very differently. So in the traditional, uh, in the Web2 world, it was mostly about, you know, how do you measure your traction through retention? But it's very difficult because to get to a point where you can retain your users, first you need to have a service, you need to have a product. So you're in, you're in this chicken and egg problem. Uh, which is very painful and for us in gaming it's even stronger because it's an incredibly capital int intensive industry so you can't build something with you know five engineers and fifty thousand dollars on the bank account you need way more and but you can't get to this point so that was a really painful part and and it's true that at least in web3 
uh, you can totally start building something because it starts with the community. So if you have a strong ability to engage, um, to truly engage a community, and I don't even think that it's, it's measured in terms of numbers, like in terms of volume, but more in terms of how intense is this engagement, then you can really start to get the show running. And, and there, I, I agree that this is, first, it's very different, but it's also way easier if you're able to, um, to tackle it this way. And I think that was Vince's point too, to the storytelling and how you um, connect it to engagement with the community as opposed to telling that story to the investor. So another Web 2, Web 3 topic is the, the token versus uh, equity. Thoughts? It's a really interesting one. Uh, last year, especially within gaming, uh, with the success of Axie uh, and, and some other play to earn titles that people are familiar with, you, you, people would almost throw money at anybody who could stand up a very basic proposition, basically build a hero trailer, you know, get a couple of really good partnerships on your website, and people will full in uh, from an IDO perspective, wanting to buy tokens, NFTs, everything. The, what if we found when we looked at the data this year is 2022, is on course for about $10 billion investment in gaming within blockchain. Now, 95% of that is from VCs, not from IDOs. So I think what we're seeing is the VCs are chasing the trend because at least we forget gaming is 250 or $300 billion industry in terms of revenue, depending on the stats you're using. Uh, and that's predicted to climb by over 100 million over the next sort of four or five years. So as a trend, 3 billion people worldwide playing video games, blockchain gaming, play to earn, uh, and, and all the other uh, incarnations being something that's on trend, the potential for adoption and the potential for revenue is great, especially with the movement around Web3. So bringing that all back, the equity coming from uh, VCs, in my opinion, will go behind projects that they believe will succeed but won't necessarily connect with the Web3 audiences. So this is why, and I, I like that point about not necessarily about volume but intensity, I think you need to look at what communities have really strong engagement, even if they're only communities of a couple of thousand, because at least we forget there were 4,000 daily players playing Axie Infinity, and that jumped up to over 2 million a day. So we, again, it's about that quality of the time invested and engagement, as opposed to just looking at the vanity metrics. Yeah, and, and actually, we started from never hearing about an equity play or, or request on, on equities to now being out of every three pitches, at least one will put up the question of, you know, are you willing to look into the equity, um, maybe a swap, you know, participation, board seat, et cetera. But it's also, it's not just the, the equity play, it's let me take a look at your deck and see what your revenue models look like. And does your revenue model include a fiat revenue stream or the possibility of creating a standard, you know, again, Web2 uh, format. And if your business has that capacity to be able to either pivot or actually coexist with Web2 and 3. Yeah. Can I, can I, uh, I think this is one of the saddest stories of, of, of our current time in crypto. Uh, there is no both. There is no doing an equity play and a token play at the same time because you're basically optimizing to two very different things. Very, very different things. This is a disaster. And then um, uh, there is no need in the token if what you're building is not open source and your token could not live outside of your ecosystem. So the, the great example I always give, if a bomb you know, blowing everything, your companies, everyone is working for you, will the token still have value? And this is a question that people are not asking themselves and like, okay, I will issue a token for my closed source game or for my whatever, but there is no value in a token because the whole idea of a token is to be decentralized and have value in a world outside of your closed ecosystem because if it's just your closed ecosystem issuer rewards you can do way more money through that 
Um, and also in history, we can see, you know, things like Celsius, regardless of what happened there, etc. Like, there is no value in the token on the long term. It's a way to make money. Like, people make money on that. Like, in the first one, two, three years, maybe. But those are for sure not the long-lasting crypto projects uh, because the whole idea of crypto is distribution and being decentralized and, 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 and you not being the only one who's contributing to, to the product. So the product must be, the IP must be open source and, and, and everything that you're doing is open source. I think, though, if I just follow what Mark was saying, I think that that's definitely um, another layer of the conversation. But I think, uh, to Mark's point, that could be just a reaction to the market environment, right? When everything gets... Yeah, I think it's a reaction, and I think it's also the, the beginning of some Web2 VCs starting to come into you know, a gray space in between the two and the three. And, and, and it's, it's, it's them kind of pushing back to their standard way of, of practice in, in their sector. Yep. Dane, how can investors help you the most? Your investors. Your investors. That's... Or maybe Look, I, they can't. I, I guess, I guess um, I, like, right now, um, we're, we're seeing kind of who our real friends are, you know? Um, like six, eight months ago, you know, we had um, a load of investors come on board um, and the ones that are like truly showing quality um, in terms of collaboration um, from a strategic perspective are the ones that are pitching up now, constantly in building a relationship. Um, so I guess kind of we're getting all the help we need. Um, I, I, I think there's also like the, 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 the kind of double-edged sword, right? It's like um, we're brand building a, a valuable brand. Like we're creating something from nothing in Block Lords. It's, uh, it's an idea that's now a fully franchised brand with a massive engaging community. So it's also how do we protect our company without selling out, you know? So you have to align with the right investors, the right partners, and now is the best time to do that, um, you know, with the bear market, the pressure, yeah, you know, all this kind of like doom and gloom, but um, now is the time when real innovation is created. Absolutely, and I, we are I, almost out of time, so please, Benjamin, let's finish I would just compliment this very quickly by saying what your investors can bring now is time, you know, is this ability, like the comfort to tell you, you know, don't be short-sighted, we're here, we're gonna back you up, keep building, there's an opportunity, you know, there are less players than before, and it's, this, it's going to be less and less. So take a, take an opportunity right now to build for uh, something that is more sustainable. And of course, if you're, I, you know, the thing right now to do is to look at your investors and be like, are you going to extend my runway so I can focus on that instead of going out there and trying to shop in the worst condition yeah. ever. So I'm yeah, hearing I, emotional I've never support. seen that actually uh, in, in, on the Web2 side. On the VC side, I'd never really been part of having someone say no to you, but saying, let me give you some advice. Yeah. And, and, and parting off with, with advice, at the beginning I was thinking, what, what the hell's going on? You know, <laughs> <laughs> so you say no, but you're going to tell me how to fix it? Well, <laughs> why don't you come on board, help me fix it, and, and then we'll, 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 both be, we'll both be happy. But that is something that Web3 has. I don't know if it's because of the DGEN concept and, and, and the way that it's been brought up from, you know, from the grassroots. But it's, it's extremely refreshing and motivating to see it. And, and, you know, like events like this, where you actually walk out and you see, I would have spent a couple hundred thousand in consulting fees yeah. that I got for free in 48 hours. Amazing. So um, emotional support and patience, I'm hearing. Vince, would you agree? I would say, leave us alone. <laughs> That's a perfect way to end uh, I, 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 this startup perspective. I know it's, it's, really, it's really quite curt and to the point, but I would say leave us alone because I think you need to trust the community and ultimately the community will dictate the success. If you believe in us, believe in the roadmap, believe in the community, help us by opening doors, but then leave us alone. Yeah. Let us get to building. Yeah. Perfect way to end. I, I, well, I, I just want to end on... Um, uh, 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 thank you for, for one. I think, as you said, um, bringing everyone together 
um, has been epic, and this has been organized in a slick as fuck manner. So it's been Thank really, you. really good. Um, but I think also kind of being more optimistic in terms of this current market and how we're going to identify the true euros and overcome the monsters, now's the time. I think like all the people right now, right here, won't be accessible in two, three years' time. You know, this is a very, very special moment in time that we have to recognize. Uh, these guys are building the next tech company of futures to come, you know? And if history is anything to go by, this is the best, this is a gift that we have right now in a bear market. So make the most of it, appreciate it. Thank you very much, what an ending. Okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.